I'm going to give you guys an inside look at how the best day traders in the world trade. And believe it or not, I'm not going to tell you guys a strategy. We're not going to get on the charts at all. I'm going to talk about their account size and how they learn to stay out of the market, how they learn to get in the market when it's applicable and how they can manage their money correctly using risk management. So that being said, let's jump right into it. So first things first, we got to give some backstory. Okay. So if we look at the best traders in the world, what do all of them have in common? Yes, all their strategies are different, right? Like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm not going to tell you guys this one strategy is going to make you the best trader in the whole wide world because every single strategy has, every single trader has a different strategy that works well for them, okay? Some people may trade support and resistance. I'm not a fan of that. Some people may trade smart money concepts. That's what I use. Some people, you know, use Bollinger Bands, use indicators, use EMAs crossing, use chart patterns, use trend lines. Those didn't work for me. Smart money concepts worked for me. However, I know support and resistance traders that make even more money than me in trading, but that when I tried to use that strategy, it didn't work for me. When I tried to use indicators, it didn't work for me. It works for other people because it makes sense in their head. So that would be honestly like the very first thing is if you guys are trying to get into trading is get a strategy that works for you. And then from there, you can start scaling. So again, what do all of these traders have in co common? We already identified that it's not their strategy. It's the risk management okay and when and where they decide to enter within the markets and it's purely based on their probability on that day to be able to execute with a high win rate okay so if we look at the amount of days that the best traders in the world are trading it's very very limited compared to the amount of days that i'm trading compared to the amount of trades that you guys are trading okay and why are they able to do that Moving on to point number two, it's due to their account size. These traders have millions and millions and millions of dollars within their trading accounts. So, you know, they can come in eight days out of the month, boom, let's say they hit on all eight of the, those days, or let's say they hit on six out of those eight days where they trade and they lose on two of those days, but their wins obviously eat their losses and their wins, if they have a million, like $10 million account, Imagine how large that win is going to be where they don't necessarily feel the pressure, feel the need to be trading every single day because, hey, you know, if you got a $10 million account, you risk 1% of that, dude, like you just made six figures in a day if you hit a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. And what happens if you, you know, make even more? You just did, you know, 300K if you hit a one-to-three risk to reward ratio. So these guys are sitting there thinking, why why would i trade on it on days where there's high probability news you know i try and avoid high prob um i try and avoid high impact news days like cpi ppi nfp and fomc or like whenever federal chairman powell steps on the stage because i am slowly getting towards that point of like look bro like i really don't want to be trading day in and day out because it's not as likely that i'll be able to hit on those days but you know, obviously my account size isn't $10 million right now. We're getting there, right? We're making progress. We're climbing up that ladder to get to that point. And that's ideally my end goal with trading is to be able to get those profits from like a $10 million size account where I can get on the charts in the morning, analyze it. And if, it's an, and if my daily bias is not set up, if it's not within a building block that I talk about in my boot camps, if it's not within any of the, if I don't see any confluences, that's what I'm doing. I'm walking out. I'm getting out of here. Okay, I'm standing up from the desk and I'm leaving. And again, if I go in, do do do, type up Forex Factory and I see a single red folder, out of there, gone, right? When would I like to trade? On high probability days, okay? So what is high probability days for me? No news, okay? That would be the first thing, you know? Avoid all high impact news, all right? Second thing, what am I looking for? Are the pairs that I trade, whether it be Forex, commodities, or indexes, are they within my daily bias? Okay, so if we see the weekly chart and we're in a downtrend and we see the daily chart and we're in a downtrend and we see the four hour and it's retracing perfectly on the daily and it's setting up to make that next daily leg down, oh baby, and there's no news, right? We're eating that up. We're sitting down, we're, we're trading that day, right? Versus if I come, come in, weekly's in a downtrend, daily's in an uptrend. 
four hours consolidating. One hour is bouncing off the freaking walls and the 15 minute is making gaps. <laughs> you know, obviously that's, that's over exaggerating, but you know what I mean, right? If bias is completely skewed, like weekly up, daily down, four hour up, hourly down, I'm leaving. I'm not trade. I'm not trading that day. I'm getting out of there, bro. Because why would I want to trade on a day where one, I'm less likely to like get a probable trade because the biases are mess are all messed up. And that alone should be <laughs> that alone should be enough of a reason for me to want to get out. Okay, so obviously, okay, I'm still trading a little bit more than I would like to just purely due to the fact that I'm still trying to grow my capital to get to the point where, and also build my psychology. That's one huge thing where, you know, let's say I dump 10 million into a trading account. That's going to be a lot, lot different on my brain, on my mental, on my discipline while having to deal with like when I enter instead of, you know, spread being up, $1,000 1000 or $2,000 like it is for me right now. Like I hit really big trading days nowadays, but it's not anything compared to what these big traders are doing, right? So let's say I just jump into an account size that they're dealing with. It's a whole different ball game. Similar to you guys where let's say you're trading right now on a $100 account and you're okay with losing $1 or $2 a day. But then let's say you know, you get blessed and someone's like, hey, I want you to trade with $100,000 of mine and you can do whatever you want with it. Just don't mess this up, okay? And you get there and you do the lot size calculation and you place the trade and boom, you're instantly down like five or not $500. You're instantly down like $100, which was your previous account size before that. You're going to be like, whoa, what am I doing? You know, like freaking out because you're not used to that risk tolerance yet. You're not used to that dollar amount being, being negative on the screen. It's a whole different game. And again, this goes into going from demo to a live account. That's why I always tell you guys, you know, I want to see slow and steady growth. Start on demo. Give me three months of profitability on there. And then from there. $100 $100 account. Give me three months of profitability on there. So you're getting used to making small amounts, amounts of money and losing small amounts of money. Okay. And then from there, scale up to a thousand dollar account. So now still losing and making small amounts of money, you know, making 10, 20, 30 bucks, losing 10, $5 per trade. But then, you know, from there, what do we do? Upgrade into a funded account. Once we show that we're profitable on that, then on the funded account, you know, I'm, I'm going in and I'm saying, Hey, I've just showed nine freaking months of profitability. Dude, I should be able to trade on, on anything. So I jump into a $200,000 account and guess what? This used to happen to me back when I was unprofitable and back when I was like, you know, very on the verge of turning profitable and taking my trading to the next level. I would jump into a funded account and I was killing it on live. And then I would get into the funded And I would lose and I would be like, I don't know what's going on. And the only thing that was different was that dollar amount I was getting to in my head. And sometimes what would happen is I would pass the challenge because I would be like, yo, like for some reason I was like, yo, this is risk-free, like whatever. I put the little deposit down, but I'm trading well on live. So it doesn't really matter. Like I'm going to make that money back regardless. But then I get in, I pass the account. And then once it's real, Once I'm seeing and reading those numbers on the screen and I'm like, yo, this is actual money that I could potentially withdraw, messed with my head. I started closing profits too early. I started cutting trades too early before it hit my stop loss, before it hit my take profit because it was messing with my mental. Okay, so that's something that you guys need to do and that's something that even I'm still working on is expanding my mental and slowly and steadily growing your trading account to the point where you know, let's say like we're slowly increasing our trading account size as long as we're profitable. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. If you're unprofitable, let's stick on demo for now. Okay. But as you start growing your trading account and you get to like, let's say a hundred thousand dollars, 
right? And you feel comfortable with risking $1,000 per trade, $2,000 per trade, $3,000 per trade. That's, that's great, bro. That's really good. Okay, from there, right? Maybe we use some of the profits to compound. We withdraw 50% of the profits, boom. And then the other 50% we keep in there, we compound it. Now, you know, let's say, let's say we, we double our account after, who freaking knows, like a, like a year, okay? That, that's still pretty unrealistic, but let's say that happens. All right, we double our account, cool. Accounts doubled, now we have $200,000 that we're trading with. Now we're risking 2K, 4K, and 8K per trade. You know, getting, getting a little bit scary, or 2K, 4K, and 6K per trade. Now we're getting scarier, right? That's double the amount that we were trading before. But it's a slow and steady climb. So instead of just going from like $1,000 per trade and then $10,000 per trade and then $100,000 per trade, we want to slowly, slowly ease ourselves into that so our mind and our psychology can be ready for it. So that's similar to what I tried to set you guys up with, where, you know, at the beginning, you know, you're trading on demo, so there's no money at risk, and then from there, boom, we jump into a $100 account where there's some money at risk, and then from there, boom, $1,000 account. It's very similar as your account size gets bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? And this is what these big traders do, and that's where, the, where I'm trying to get at, and that's where all of you guys should get at, where you're trying to have a massive account size trade on as little days as possible where you're most probable to hit a trade and like, you know, you come into the market and you're just saying like, look, this doesn't look great, awesome. Doesn't matter because you know when the days come in the market, not going anywhere, your setups are going to repeat itself. That's how the market work. it's, works, it's on an algorithm. Those setups are going to come because you've seen them before and you've proved that you're profitable on them. You can sit down and when they show up, boom, mink, snipe that shit okay you snipe it down you hit that sniper entry boom you just made six figures in a freaking day and then that's when you push away from the desk you walk away just like you did all the other days but on this day you made a bunch of money right your win rate is going to be much higher your the money that's going to be coming in because your account size is so large it's going to be much higher okay and obviously this takes time to get up to this point but i want you guys to be consciously thinking that hey this is my goal and ideally i'm not going to be trading every single day day in and day out because guess what that's hard on the brain, that's hard on your mental, that's hard on your discipline to stick to a trading plan. Also, you guys shouldn't be trading, you know, every single day. Like, even if you have a small baby account, you shouldn't be trading on high impact news days. I say this every single time, and I know other traders out there, they trade on high impact news days, but I think it's a very bad example to set for beginner traders when you guys come on in here, you know, sit down. Oh, I can't wait to trade with my trend lines and candlestick patterns. Bruh. Like, okay, so you think, you know, like first, like, let's be honest, you guys are watching this video, probably an unprofitable trader, right? You guys aren't making money from the market, okay? Like, let's take a reality check right now. You guys are not profitable, you're watching this video to gain tips and tricks to help turn you profitable, okay? Cool, I'm not trying to sneak this, you guys, we're just being honest, right? So you guys sit down, okay, I am unprofitable. If the best traders in the whole wide world are trading eight days out of the month versus you guys are trading every single day, notice how there's kind of an issue there. Notice how the best traders are avoiding high impact news days. The best traders in the world are avoiding days where, you know, their trade bias isn't completely set up, but you guys are. Doesn't really make sense, right? Why aren't you trying to replicate what the best people in the world are, are doing? You know, and, and that goes back to the risk management thing. These people, you know, the best people in the world at trading, they're using risk management. You guys are full porting and trading every single day and blowing accounts. These guys, dude, like they're sitting down. Um, place their trade and then they just sit there and watch it hit their take profits. And then they, boom, push the chair away, go on with their day. That's how trading should be. Trading should give you freedom. Trading shouldn't be, oh man, like I gotta get up and lose money again today. And oh, I gotta get up and trade on 
CPI and try and gamble and figure out where price is going to go. No, bro. That's not what trading is about. Trading should be stress-free. Even though it's a super stressful job, you, your goal should to make it be stress-free where you come in and you're like, hey, there's no news. <laughs> you know, the charts are setting up within my bias. This should be a piece of freaking cake. You know, and if you lose that day, whatever. Guess what? The market's still going to be here tomorrow. The market's still going to be here a week from now. market's still going to be here from a month from now. Who knows, 10 years from now, world's looking like crap. <laughs> the world's looking like crap, but that's besides the point. Okay, so hopefully you guys learned something from this. Hopefully some of you traders are going to trade less because of this video, and hopefully you guys are, you know, changing your goals up as you guys start increasing your account size and start looking towards the future and looking at how trading's going to look for you guys in the future and maybe you can model even if you have a small account right now you can model your trading days or your trading months or your trading weeks around how the best traders in the world are doing it taking like five to eight trades a month and really really trying to avoid low probability days for you guys to take trades okay so with that being said i love y'all okay much love i appreciate you guys i'll catch you guys in the next one peace